lifestyle from Atlantis to Sodom and Gomorrah, our culture is filled with tales of once densely populated cities that ended up empty and forgotten. Many of these stories are mere legend, but plenty of very real cities have gone from sprawling capitals to barren wasteland. What was once a booming Arctic town with a population of around 1,500 people is now a Russian ghost town. We're going to be looking at some of the most shocking examples of this today. Here are 15 of the largest abandoned cities in the world. Ordo City Foreigners consider the city to be abandoned. Chinese consider the city to still be developing. This is what the acclaimed French photographer Raphael Olivier had to say about Ordo City. China's ill-fated attempt at creating a futuristic utopia in Inner Mongolia. This YouTube channel is not based in China, so you can include us among the foreigners who consider Ordos to be abandoned. And when you see the photographs of Olivier snapped when visiting the fledgling concept city, it's difficult to arrive at any other conclusion. The Chinese government first conceived of Ordo City in the early 2000s and quickly began construction. Their aim was to manufacture a mirage of international arts and industry in the desert that was China's much criticized communist regime. Hundreds of millions of dollars were pumped into the construction of Ordos, with towering skyscrapers and elaborate government buildings popping up seemingly overnight. However, government officials quickly discovered that they had been overly ambitious as initial interest in the city faded quickly. Despite being designed to house 1 million residents, it's today home to just 100,000 people, most of whom are there because they work for the city government and are essentially forbidden from moving elsewhere. Raphael's haunting images of Ordos show a city that stretches across 137 square miles with rarely a soul in sight. Hollow buildings dominate the skyline, while unfinished structures and statues gradually disappear into overgrown weeds. <laughs> As Raphael says, Chinese authorities like to tell themselves the city is still developing, as do the landlords who invest millions of dollars in Ordos as of yet uninhabited apartment complexes. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Kalamba New City a few years ago, when the African nation of Angola was going from strength to strength, a team of Chinese developers decided it would be the perfect country to establish a new city geared exclusively towards Africa's rich and powerful. They dubbed it Kalamba New City. Rather than erring on the side of caution until demand for a city was clear, these developers threw themselves into the project, building tower after tower and apartment complex after apartment complex. They even built schools and gyms. All in all, about three and a half billion dollars went into the construction, but developers were confident that they would easily turn a profit from the $100,000 price tag on even the city's most modest apartments. And they probably would have had it not been for the fact that the average Angolan lives on less than $2 a day. Unable to find inhabitants for the high-priced penthouses they had invested so much money into, the Chinese city planners were forced to bus in workers and students from surrounding areas just to give Kalamba some life. Today, it remains unable to attract long-term residents, although dark tourists often visit to explore its deserted streets and marvel at the bustling metropolis that never was. <laughs> Kirik Chen Kirikchan was built in the upper Kolyma highlands of Russia during the Second World War. Construction was carried out not by licensed workers, but by gulag prisoners who were forced to toll endlessly in the harsh Russian climate. In the years following its founding, Kirikchan was one of the region's most active producers of coal. This prompted many Russians and even non-Russians to relocate to the city in the hopes of finding a living as a coal miner. The city's popularity peaked in 1989 when it recorded a total population of 5,794. Ironically, this proved to be the downfall as more coal miners meant its coal supply began to dwindle rapidly. In 1992, a mine that had once been along the most profitable in the entire city was forced to close down after its contents were depleted. Many residents cut their losses shortly after they headed for greener pastures, but long-term inhabitants were determined to stay until the bitter end. That bitter end came in 1996, when a mine explosion killed six workers and injured many others. Fearing a repeat disaster, 
the Russian government began offering more stubborn residents monetary incentives to leave the city. By 2007, only 227 inhabitants remained. A few short years later, in 2010, the population finally dropped to zero and it was officially declared a ghost town. <laughs> Krakow Krakow is located in the Italian province of Matera, where it was established thousands of years ago. Nobody is truly certain about its exact age, but archaeologists have uncovered tombs dating back as far as the 8th century BC, so we can assume that Krakow is, at the very least, almost 3,000 years old. Given its ancient roots, many people assume that it was abandoned hundreds of years ago and has spent the past couple of centuries rotting away. In reality, however, this is far from the case. Evidence suggests a steady stream of occupation in Krakow from the moment it sprung from the Italian mountain right up to the end of the 20th century. But what could possibly cause an empire that was so strong for so long to come crumbling down? Terrifyingly, many experts believe the answer to be run-of-the-mill construction works. It seems that routine maintenance tasks carried out on Krakow's sewage and water systems inadvertently sparked a series of landslides. These landslides persisted for a number of years and were eventually followed by flooding and even an earthquake. By the 1980s, it had become clear that it was no longer a safe place to live and even its most devoted residents had no choice but to flee their lifelong homes. Today, its terrain is a little less than treacherous. Thousands of tourists visit its remains every year, trekking up the steep hills to indulge in the twisted novelty of its desolation. Hauntingly, most of these visitors are unaware that their own hometowns are just one poorly planned maintenance project away from suffering the same terrible fate of this old town. Mm -hmm. Pyramiden Pyramiden was founded in 1910 by Sweden before being sold to the Soviet Union in 1927. Its new owners immediately set about draining it of all its resources, deploying thousands of Ukrainian miners to help them do so. As their coal exports grew, so did its population and consequently the settlement itself. At the height of its productivity, it boasted a hotel, a library, a school, and other amenities typical of a large town or city. It even had its own music studio, so it certainly looks like its residents were doing their best to prepare for a future without the coal that their hometown was so dependent on. Unfortunately, that future came much sooner than expected, in 1998. It was in that year, on the 31st of March, that its coal supply ran dry and residents had no choice but to abandon the settlement they had tried so hard to save. Since that fateful day at the turn of the millennium, it's become a pilgrimage site for those fascinated by its failure and the heartbreak of those who once called it home. Ironically, this has given the ghost town a second lease on life. Its hotel has even been reopened, allowing visitors to experience the indescribably eeriness of an overnight stay in a city with no residents. <laughs> Hashima Island Not far from Nagasaki sits Japan's Hashima Island. The island was the scene of a coal discovery all the way back in 1810, and in the space of just seven years, it developed into a full-fledgling mining settlement. Hashima's coal production was so great that it inspired many would-be miners to relocate to the island, often with their families in tow. This necessitated a greater number of apartment buildings, as well as schools, boutiques, theaters, and more. The island even became the site of Japan's first reinforced concrete building in 1916. It's unclear just how long Hashima Island could have been mined for coal, but things were showing no sign of slowing down in the 1960s. Unfortunately, this was the last decade that petroleum became widespread in Japan. More and more Japanese people turned away from coal in favor of this exciting new oil. By 1974, there were virtually no use for coal Hashima had to offer and so its mines were shut down despite their high activity. The island's economy crumbled not long after and its residents headed to surrounding countries in search of more sustainable careers. Access to Hashima Island was forbidden from its abandonment right up to 2009, when Japanese authorities finally allowed curious tourists to visit its empty streets. Since then, tens of thousands of people have traveled to Hashima Island to get a glimpse of its enormous stone buildings and the nature that it's thriving among them. Some past residents have also traveled to the island for what must have been a heartbreaking reminder of the good times they enjoyed before being forced out of their homes. 
today, Hashima Island, a once crowded settlement with seemingly unlimited potential, has become nothing but a testament to the endurance of reinforced concrete. <laughs> Tim's Town Just in case you thought China was at risk of losing its ghost town to the Russians, we're going to pay a visit to Tim's Town. But wait, isn't the Thames in England? We can hear you ask. Yes, indeed it is. But that's kind of the point. When the Chinese government first conceived of Thames Town, their aim was to build a quaint English village just 19 miles from the center of Shanghai. To their credit, the developers actually did a pretty good job. Thames Town has virtually everything you think of when you imagine a town in merry old England. It features cobble streets, Tudor-style buildings, and even the UK's iconic red telephone boxes. The only thing missing from this little slice of England is the people. And we don't mean English people, we mean people in general. Despite the many millions of pounds the Chinese government poured into making Thames Town a reality, it sits almost entirely devoid of inhabitants. The country's property bubble has rendered the town's houses and apartments too expensive for even some of China's most elite residents. Meanwhile, the wealthy individuals who could afford to live here have no reason to do so as they can visit the real England anytime they want and enjoy some authentic British cuisine from London's bustling Chinatown area. Skrunda As the Cold War thundered on, the Soviet Union began establishing secret military bases across the countries they had access to. Many of these bases were large enough to be considered towns or cities, such as Skrunda 1. Skrunda 1 was founded in Latvia in 1963 and was one of the largest covert bases kept by the Soviet Union during the Cold War. It was so big, in fact, that the families of soldiers stationed there resided in Skrunda permanently. They could do this with the feeling of living a relatively normal life as the base was equipped with everything one might find in a more traditional settlement. When the Soviet Union disbanded, the future of Skrunda seemed uncertain. Because of its 5,000-strong population, authorities were reluctant to evacuate it, and so an agreement was reached that would allow Skrunda to continue operations for a period of four more years. Once those four years were up, Russian forces would have to hand it over to the Latvian government and leave the newly minted country. By the year 2000, it had been fully evacuated and many of its buildings torn down. The Latvian government initially hoped to refurbish the settlement and turn it into a city, but lacked the funds to do so. And so, it was forgotten about by all but the most enthusiastic of dark tourists. Eventually, the Latvia realized that there was a profit to be made from the decaying Russian war base and began charging an admission fee of about $4. Though this price is by no means extravagant, it's provided the government with an extra stream of income and may eventually be used to turn Skrunda into the magnificent city that it has the potential to be. <laughs> Burj Al Babas As we learn from Thamestown, concept cities very rarely work out. Those that do are generally only effective as holiday destinations and are not the kind of city a sane person would choose to live in full time. If the developers of Burj Al Babas had paused to consider this, they would have saved themselves a whole lot of time and even more money. Burj Al Babas is a Turkish ghost town that was modeled after the breathtaking villages one might expect to find in a fairy tale. The majority of its houses are built to resemble bite-sized chateaux, while buildings intended for businesses look more like castles than laundromats. The centerpiece of the town is its thermal springs, which also double as a spa and water park. Throughout its construction, it was protested by residents of nearby towns, who claimed the obnoxious architecture would be out of place among their more traditional, modest homes. However, the developers paid little attention to their concerns and continued building their make-believe fortresses. They realized they had a problem when it became clear that Arab billionaires they were marking were not the least bit interested in the concept city. They were forced to halt the project and file for bankruptcy in 2019. But while a city of fairy tale castles may not make for perfect living conditions, it's an amazing site for urban exploration. Travelers come from all around the world to stroll through the unfinished streets. It's a pity that developers haven't sought of charging a $4 entry fee. If they did that, they could make back all their losses and just 6,750,000 visitors. Centralia And now it's time to take a look at Centralia, Pennsylvania, the town that inspired the Silent Hill film series. 
Centralia was founded in 1841, but it wouldn't be until 1856 that its massive potential as a coal mining town would be discovered. Following this, a number of mines opened across Centralia, attracting hundreds of new residents in the process. Centralia's population increased steadily throughout the remainder of the 19th century and suffered its first blow only when the onset of World War I happened. If it hadn't been for this international battle, who knows what heights the non-abandoned settlement would have reached before its decline began. The population didn't have much time to recover after World War I came to an end as the Great Depression caused several mines to close for business, prompting many inhabitants to look for work elsewhere. Then in 1962, a fire broke out in the mines beneath Centralia and provided impossible to quench. Despite knowing a fire was burning right before their feet, Centralia residents were determined to remain in their hometown as long as they could. As a result, many were poisoned by the noxious gas that seeped into their environment, and a teenage boy very nearly perished when he fell into a sinkhole that opened up in his backyard. This sparked decades of the U.S. government trying to oust people from Centralia. They offered multiple bailouts, but few residents were willing to accept them. Finally, an agreement was reached that would allow longtime inhabitants to remain in the town until their death, at which point their property would be taken over by the government. By 2020, Centralia recorded a population of zero people and was finally condemned. <laughs> Verosha Verosha is certainly the most controversial ghost town to appear in this video. Located in Cyprus, it was once home of the most vibrant areas in the entire country, a scenic resort town. It attracted wealthy individuals from all over the world and is even said to have been a favorite holiday destination of Elizabeth Taylor. Tragically, this all changed in 1974, when Verosha was invaded by Turkish forces determined to strengthen their hold on the northern portion of Cyprus. In the wake of the invasion, most of the Greek living in Verosha fled their homes. Most of them intended to return once tensions died down, believing this would happen within a couple of weeks. They were wrong. Turkish forces cut off all access, allowing only approved military personnel to enter. Verosha would remain closed off for decades, its many hotels and nightclubs slowly crumbling under the painful realization that people who once packed them were never going to return. In 2017, it was open to Turkish residents, but even then, large portions of it remained off limits. The area has since been widened, and it may be explored along with the numbers of people who visit it. This has allowed visitors a small glimpse into the lives of the people who once lived here. Chilling photographs and videos show their former dwellings just as they left them half a century ago as just they're likely to remain until Verosha is finally fully reopened. <laughs> Kennecott Alaska is one of the least populated states in America, so it should come as no surprise that it's the site of more than a few ghost towns. One of these Alaskan ghost towns is Kennecott, which is not too far removed from the city of McCarthy. Kennecott's life was short but sweet. It was founded in 1911 as a copper mining town and quickly proved to be one of the most profitable of its kind. However, it reached peak productivity far too quickly, documenting record copper production of $32.4 million in 1916. Things went south shortly after this and within a decade it had become clear that its mines were not rich enough to allow for many more years of mining. As mines began to shut, businesses and residents left it in droves. By the 1950s, only three people remained in the town. Today, it sits empty in the Alaskan mountains, but its contributions to the state and America as a whole have not been forgotten. Its brief but profitable stint as one of the nation's leading copper mining settlements earned it the title of National Historic Landmark and the National Park Services actively works to preserve its buildings and camps, much to the delight of the countless history buffs that visit it each year. Hmm. <laughs> Pripyat. Prior to the Chernobyl disaster of 1986, the Ukrainian city of Pripyat was a swarming melting pot and one of the cultural epicenters of Europe. That all changed in a heartbeat when the nuclear power plant exploded and the city had to be evacuated. Some 50,000 people fled Pripyat in the wake of the explosion under the belief that they would be able to return home in less than a week. Unfortunately for them, the radiation levels did not decrease as expected and remain dangerously high to this day. As a result, the Ukrainian government has declared Pripyat an exclusion zone and has forbidden any of its former inhabitants from trying to resume their lives there. 
However, the high levels of radiation have done little to ward off dark tourists and urban explorers. If anything, the risk associated with entering it has made the abandoned city all the more alluring. Daredevil photographers regularly travel here to document its nuclear decay. The images they return with are truly spine-chilling, showing abandoned buildings with chipped paint and floors littered with gas masks. Some photographs even show toys and cribs left behind by parents who no doubt believe their newborns would have a chance to grow up in their beloved city. Kayakoy The Turkish village of Kayakoy was once living evidence that people of different religious beliefs could live together in total tranquility. Tracing its roots back to the 14th century, the village was home to a thriving community of Muslims and Greek Orthodox Christians who, together, built the staggered stone cottages that even today give it an aesthetic that wouldn't look of place on the cover of a postcard. Things took a turn for the worse at the beginning of the 20th century, when relations between Greek Christians and Muslim authorities soured. A number of temporary exiles were imposed upon the Christians' inhabitants, some of whom elected never to return, even when the opportunity to do so arose. By the outbreak of the Greco-Turkish War, most of the residents had already fled the village, accepting that its days as a peaceful paradise had come to an end. The Turkish government imported a community of Muslims from Greece in order to fill the void left by its Christians, but these newcomers refused to make their homes in the village owing to its inconvenient location. As a result, it was rendered a ghost town. Today, Turkish authorities look there with far more sympathy than their predecessors. A conscious effort was made to preserve the remains of the village's stone buildings and churches. But even with these well-meaning efforts, it's difficult to overlook the fact that a village which was once home to an interfaith community has become a dilapidated reminder of man's inability to sustain peace and harmony. Adam Perhaps no city has experienced such a drastic change in circumstances as Adam. Located in Azerbaijan, Adam flourished during the Soviet era. It was home to some of the most beautiful buildings in the region and was known as a hub of music, literature, and other art forms. In its heyday, it was home to just under 30,000 people and that number looked certain to grow. However, the fall of the Soviet Union quickly put an end to the city's status as Azerbaijan's capital of culture. Following the collapse of the USSR, Armenian forces were merciless in their attacks on the city and its residents. Many of its most magnificent buildings were bombed into oblivion, forcing residents to either flee or die fighting for their rights to remain in their hometown. Armenian forces even went so far as to blow up the homes of the Azeri nationals to ensure that they would not return. Consequently, the once lively multicultural juggernaut is today all but abandoned. Occasionally, one might encounter an urban explorer in the streets, or perhaps members of the government surveying the ghost town's potential for resurrection. But even as authorities make moves to return Agdom to its former glories, Azeri people are reluctant to return to the city for fear of being caught up in another so-called cleansing by Armenian forces. That does it for this video, and we've got to say, we're a little relieved we've made it to the end. These past 20 minutes have been a reminder of the fragility of our greatest accomplishments under the weight of our greatest weaknesses. It seems that no matter how much effort we put into the construction of peaceful living spaces, it can be thwarted by greed, natural disasters, and of course, war. Which of these tales of desolation did you find most heartbreaking and why? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more insight into the human condition and the world all around us. See you next time.